Next, we'll be sewing on a skirt hook and bar. We like skirt hook and bars in the costume world because they tend to lie flat on the body when they're sewn in and they lock in place. So as you slide them together, you can actually feel them sort of click in place once you have them joined. So this is the skirt hook here and this is the bar that receives the hook. So typically we find these on waistbands of trousers and skirts, thus the name the skirt hook, but they can be used many places on the garment. So these are sewn on two separate sides of the garment, usually in something that overlaps the other and then locks into place. They sew on much like our friend the snap, so I've double threaded my thread, so you can double or quadruple thread. And we begin sewing, much like we did the snap. You want to hold your hook in place so that it doesn't wiggle away from you as you're sewing it. And I start on one side of the hook and then work my way around. And you can see that they provided you holes in the hook itself to sew into. So, we go from the outer edge of the fabric up into the first hole and we will sew each hole individually as we move around. Do not be tempted to treat it like the holes in a non-shank button and go back and forth through the set of holes. That's not nearly as strong as individually sewing from fabric to hole. So again, I just started with my needle right outside the hook, came up through the hole, and I will put my needle in the same spot again. So you'll be continuously sewing in the same space. And again, like the other closures, five or six times should do it. These are very small holes, so make sure that you are sewing in the same place over and over again. and then we'll move on to our other hole. Once you've sewn one side, then it's time to move to the center hole at the end of the hook. And it's really important to sew into this. It keeps the hook from flopping up and down when it's used and keeps the whole thing stable. So if you have multiple layers of fabric, you can put your needle in right next to where you stopped sewing and then come out here so that we are disguising our traveling thread much like the snaps. And this is a much wider hole so you can move from the end to the center to the opposite end very gradually as you're stitching. So I'm just placing my needle a little bit further down the line there. And that'll get good coverage of this entire hole. Once I've finished, then again, I'm sinking my needle right outside where I was and I will be coming up this way. And feel free to turn around your fabric or your garment so that it's in the orientation that feels most comfortable to you as you sew. So again, fabric into the hole, fabric into the hole. And I will repeat what I did on the opposite side.
eventually, once I've sewn this enough times, I will make a knot in a similar fashion to the knot on the snap. And I will demonstrate that. One more time should be enough. You can see my completely sewn hook there. And we'll come just outside. And don't be tempted, again, to tie your knot in this loop. It is jumping much too far from being within the hook to outside the hook. So I'm going to pull all the way flat and then take one more small stitch. Loop and pull until I've got my knot. Now, sewing on the bar is very similar. I'm going to knot my thread once more. And the only difference in sewing the bar is that obviously it doesn't have that piece in the middle, right, as the hook does. But this also is a very large area to jump from one to the other. So once I sew this set of holes and I'm ready to move to the opposite end, it's really wise when you're moving this far to stop, tie a knot, and then restart your thread. So once I've sewn one, then two, three more stitches. Now when I'm ready to move to the opposite end, I'm going to stop, tie a knot, so that I don't have a gigantic traveling thread in between the ends. Re-knot. Trim. And then move to the opposite end. Sometimes she gets stuck. So we have our hook and our bar.